Yeah, so today we are going to start the new topic. Okay, so first we talk about the chiral fermions. So remember, say under Lorentz transformation, lambda, the uh, the Dirac spinner field transform as s lambda psi x, and the x prime is the Lorentz transformation of x. Okay, so x prime. Lambda act on x, okay, and then then the s is uh, 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 given by say uh, um, say omega mu mu sigma mu mu, okay, and the sigma mu is given by the commutator of the gamma matrices. Okay. So let me just write it down. So sigma mu mu. Just remind you to i divided by four. Come on, come on. Okay. So one natural question. So previously, when we derived the Dirac equation, we showed that the Dirac equation requires actually psi to have four components. Okay. And. Uh, so, but then we show that the Dirac equation is covariant if the psi transform this way. So, natural question is that whether you can actually restrict to a smaller part, say to a subset of psi, whether they still have well-defined Lorentz transformation. Okay, whether they still uh, whether we actually need to have four components uh, to have well-defined. Full complex component to have well defined the Lorentz transformation. Okay. And the answer turns out to be no, you actually don't need to have four complex components to have well defined the Lorentz transformation. Actually, uh, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can reduce it. Okay. And so there are two ways to reduce it. And one is called the Chiral fermion, and the one is called the Majorana fermion. Okay. So, so one is called the Majorana fermion. So, so, so we first talk about the chiral fermion and uh, one way to do it. So for this purpose, we will look at the specific representation of gamma matrices. Okay, consider, so now I will use a representation which is different from what you, uh, us, uh, uh, so we consider the following one. Gamma zero equal to zero i, i zero, gamma i, equal to zero minus i sigma i, i sigma i, zero. Okay, so this, so this look at this choice of gamma matrices, okay? So I will look, call this choice to be star, okay? And uh, so, so you can also work it out, you find the sigma, so sigma zero i, so, so this is the sigma corresponding to the boost. So you find the sigma i, you can just do the commutator. Find the sigma i is equal to minus i divided by two. Give, uh, have this block diagonal form, sigma i zero, zero sigma i. Again, the small sigma i is always the poly matrices. And then you can also work out the sigma i j. Then you find it's given by minus one half, Epsilon i j k, then sigma k, zero, zero, sigma k. Okay. Oh, sorry, here there's a minus sign. Okay, here there's a minus sign. Okay, so, so you find that the, uh, uh, um, they have the following form. So what do you observe about this? Uh, do you see something? Yes? 
yes, they are block diagonal. So if sigma is block diagonal, then that means this S is also block diagonal. Okay? So when S is block diagonal, what does that mean? Yes? Hmm? Exactly. So, so when the S is block diagonal, that means when I write Psi, so Psi have four components, that means that the upper two components, the lower two components, they don't transform to each other. Okay, they only transform within themselves. They don't transform to each other, okay? So, so if I choose, that means S lambda is block diagonal. So that means if I write psi x into two two component vector, okay, so psi l and psi r, so I denote the upper two component by psi l and lower two component by psi r are two component complex vector. That means, under Lorentz transformation, under S lambda, Psi L, and Psi R do not mix. So they just transform among themselves. And they just transform among themselves. So they actually have well-defined Lorentz transformation as a smaller unit. Okay, you don't need four components to be able to transform on the Lorentz transformation. Actually, uh, these two components can already transform. Okay. So this tells you that in the sense that the Lorentz covariance only requires Two component spindles. We actually don't just by the Lorentz transformation itself, we don't actually need four components. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you we actually do this all along. So how do we do uh, uh, know this all along? Yes. Um, um, sorry, say it again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to go to four components because there's no two-dimensional, uh, there's no uh, two-component representation of the gamma matrices. But that doesn't say it's a Lorentz transformation. Yeah, uh, to write down the uh, algebra for the gamma matrices, you need four components. Yeah. But we actually uh, knew all along uh, that uh, two components is enough for Lorentz transformation. How do we know, uh, how do we actually know all along? Um, we have a, uh, uh, yeah, this is maybe more, uh, more complicated. We, uh, uh, we have something much simpler. Yes? Yeah, exactly. So we, uh, we already said before, uh, uh, if you have a massless case, when m equal to zero, uh, the Dirac equation reduced to the two components. And uh, 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 it's enough to do two components. And the Dirac equation is covariant, okay? And so that means that actually you should be able to do it with two components, okay? Because the massless particle, they should be able to transform on the Lorentz transformation. And so, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so, um, So we already saw this because the mass is. So the hint from before is that the mass is spin, uh, mass is uh, 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 only require two components. 
since the mass of this case must also be Lorentz covariant, so that uh, a Lorentz symmetry itself should only require two components. So it is not the Lorentz symmetry, uh, uh, actually, uh, Lorentz covariance require Dirac theory to have four components. It is the mass, OK? So it is the mass. Mass m. If, if you wanted to describe a massive particle, then you must have four components. Okay, so uh, so it's the mass which is the key. Okay, good. Any questions on this? So now we have shown in this particular representation of gamma matrices, for this particular choice of gamma matrices, and then the psi transform uh, block, uh, uh, block diagonally. But then we also said, but, but now consider a different choice of uh, gamma matrices. And then this property will not hold. Okay, this property will not hold. Now the question is that does this uh, even with other uh, uh, gamma matrices, can we actually reduce psi to some smaller component? Okay, uh, the answer still sh should still be yes, because we said that the all gamma all uh, uh, representation of gamma matrices they should be equivalent. So if we can do it in this uh, choice of gamma matrices, then we should be able to do it in any choice of gamma matrices. Okay, so so now let's. Uh, 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 let me tell you how to do it for the general gamma matrices. Okay. So this property that you can reduce to two components should exist for all choice. Of gamma matrices. Just for other choice of gamma matrices, to separate the psi into psi L and the psi R is more subtle. Okay, you no longer is just simple uh, the upper two component or lower two component. Uh, so we have to do a little bit of work. Okay, and the, uh, uh, actually we don't need to do much work uh, uh, if you actually find the right trick. Okay. And the, uh, so the beautiful trick to do this for, uh, for any choice of gamma matrices is that you can introduce the following object. So what is called gamma five. So gamma five is defined to be I gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Okay, so you take the product of the, all the gamma matrices together, and then with a factor of i. Mm. Okay, so the i there is for the purpose that if you you can check yourself that the gamma five is actually Hermitian, so the i is there for this purpose. Okay, you need the i for this to be true. You also can check yourself that gamma five square. Is equal to one. Okay, so uh, uh, so this you can almost easily understand because it's all gamma zero, gamma one, gamma three. So you multiply itself again because any same gamma matrix they multiply either to be one or minus one. So you multiply them together in the end they can be either one or minus one. Just turns out uh, for this choice of i it's one. Okay, so um, yeah, and then you can also check. The gamma five anti commute with any gamma matrices. Okay, so mu here is of course from zero to three, and uh, so so this is uh, uh, of. You can see immediately from here. Okay, you can immediately from here because gamma matrices with 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 un 
whose indices are not the same in the anti-commute. Okay? So if you try to commute this with any gamma matrices, you have three of them. Yeah, yeah because this uh, uh, runs over all gamma matrices. So the one which, yeah, so if you uh, 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 take with some gamma mu, uh, and that particular one which is the same as gamma mu, of course, commute with gamma mu. But then you have three others. But three others will give you minus sign. And you can also check yourself. Gamma five have actually have zero trace. Okay, and so this I will leave as an exercise for yourself, okay. uh, which you can do as you did before uh, uh, with other, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, in your homework. Uh, uh, yeah, similar to the exercise you have done in your homework. So now from these properties. Okay, now we can say the following things about the gamma five matrix. First, because uh, gamma five square square to one, and also this is Hermitian. So its Hermitian means its eigenvalue is all real. Okay, so its eigenvalue is all real, and gamma five square equal to one. That means his eigenvalue is either plus or minus one. Okay, so uh, have eigenvalues. Plus minus one, okay. And then from the property that this is traceless, then tell you the number of the eigenvalues which is plus one and the number of minus one they should be the same, okay. Otherwise they won't cancel, uh, it won't be traceless. And so uh, so each eig uh, so each eigenspace is two dimensional. Okay, so so you have four uh, uh, you have four eigenvalues. So there's two plus one, two minus one. Okay, must be. So since you have eigenvalues two plus one, two minus one, and then we can uh, uh, introduce a projector to project into the eigenspace, say with plus one, uh, with eigenvalue plus one, or the eigenvalue minus one. Okay, so I can introduce a projector, which f for historical reason is called PL. It's defined to be one half, one plus gamma five, and the PR is one half, one minus gamma five. Okay. So, so, so this will project into eigenspace with the uh, 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 eigenvalue plus one, and this will project into eigenspace with minus one. Okay, because when you uh, one minus one plus, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so so uh, so you can check, okay. So you can check they are really projectors of so PL square equal to PR square equal to one, and PL PR equal to zero, and PL plus PR equal to infinity. Okay, and then. Okay. So, so now I introduce now I can project define the projection of P, psi L into uh, uh, of the projection of P, uh, psi project to the left a uh, 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 left space, okay? And psi R to be the projection to the to the other space. Okay, I define them this way. And then you can easily see, so by definition, you can really convince yourself gamma 5 acting on psi, then you just equal to psi L, and then gamma 5 psi R is equal to minus psi R. Okay? So, so they project into the eigenvalues of plus and minus. Yes? Why is PL square equal to PR square? Oh, sorry. No, 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 this is uh, good, 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 good. Uh, no, this is completely wrong, okay? <laughs> this is completely wrong. I was dreaming. Um, so PL squared could be PL. PL squared. Sorry, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, so you can check their projectors, okay? 
So, so indeed, you see, so from here, from this definition, you can check this is true. Okay, just this is a one second check. And so, so indeed, they project you to the uh, eigenspace of gamma five or plus minus one. Okay. So, so then by definition, okay, so now this psi L, psi R, which is not defined for any choice of gamma matrices. So again, they, they have two independent independent <coughs> complex component, okay. And so, um, so they so they call the chiral spinners. Sometimes also called the wild spinners. Okay, so uh, and so this is the analog of psi L and psi R uh, here for the uh, for the general choice of gamma matrices. So now we will check this actually indeed. So now the claim is that psi L and psi R define it this way, will transform under themselves, under the range transformation. They will not mix with each other. Okay. So again, psi L and psi R here are each are four components, okay? They they just have only two independent compact components. So they still have four complex components, okay? And uh, there's still four component spinners, which are just just there's only two independent ones. There's only two independent ones. Okay, so so now that it's easy to check, they actually transform uh, uh, to the uh, uh, among themselves. So you can uh, check. That gamma five actually commutes with sigma mu mu. So this is very easy to see. So from here, gamma five commute with any gamma mu. Okay, or anti commute with any gamma mu. And the sigma mu mu is just the the sum of two, uh, the product of two gamma mu's, uh, have even gamma mu. So uh, and so gamma five will commute with them. Okay. So gamma five will commute with them. So if gamma five commutes with sigma mu mu, then gamma five commutes with s lambda because the s lambda is just genera uh, generated by, by sigma mu mu, and then that means so when it commutes with s, that means under transformation, uh, 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 s will not uh, uh, under transformation by s will not change the eigenvalues of gamma five. Okay, so that means that psi l prime. S lambda psi L and the gamma five acting on psi L prime is still uh, gamma L. Okay, so it's still within the same space. Okay. And similarly with uh, psi R. Okay, so uh, so that tells you that psi L and the psi R they transform separately because of the gamma five commute with the um, uh, 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 with Lorentz transformation. And so each eigenspace, they transform separately from each other. Okay. Good, any questions on this? So you can also find in the, um, so in the chiral representation, so you can check in this star, so the star, uh, that particular choice of gamma is called the chiral representation, okay? Be because in that uh, 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 choice of gamma, uh, uh, since simplified, you just have upper two components and lower two components. So you can check yourself uh, just by working it out that the, um, the gamma five indeed just have block diagonal form. One zero zero minus one. Okay, so that's why 
in that case, it's very simple. Okay, but 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 in other representation, gamma five can be more complicated. Good, any questions on this? Yes, uh, uh, you have a question? Okay. Yes. Another way to do this is that we can try to find a unitary basis that uh, shows from under which this uh, arbitrary representation is equivalent to the parallel representation. From this object, can we figure out what those, you know, what that unitary representation looks like? Yeah, 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 you can, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's not a unitary transformation, just a similar transformation. Yeah. Uh, 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 so each of them are related by similar transformation. And indeed, uh, uh, the gamma 5, uh, uh, gamma 5 in the other representation are related to this one just by a similar transformation. Too. Yeah, uh, so I will use that language when I talk about my Orana spinner. Uh, so, so in this case, it's sufficiently simple. I don't need to use that language. Yeah, but you can use that language, yeah. Okay, so so let's go back to this Carroll representation, okay, and write the Dirac equation uh, 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 into this Carroll representation. So, yeah, um, one second. So 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 now, if you write the Dirac equation in terms of psi l and psi r, so remember the Dirac equation of the following form. A Dirac uh, 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 Lagrangian density. Okay. And then since psi just equal to the sum of the, uh, uh, so the psi r, okay. And then you can just write this in terms of the uh, of psi l and psi r. Okay. You can write this in terms of psi l and psi r. And then you find the cross term that vanish. Okay, you can also check this explicitly in the Carroll representation, but uh, 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 but the expression I'm writing down is general. Okay, so you can write it as psi dagger I shall zero I sigma I I shall I L. Yeah, sorry. Um, Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, actually, psi r dagger. Yeah, let me uh, first write that. I think I said something wrong. Yeah, okay. Okay. So 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 yeah. Uh, uh, I say something. Like this expression only applies to the Carroll representation. Okay. So, so in the Carroll representation of gamma star, in this space of star, and then we have two components. Then I can write it this psi and the psi l and psi r into two components, and then then yeah yeah. So uh, so this is just ordinary sigma matrices. Okay. The sigma or uh, uh, sigma matrices, and so this is the expression you get. Okay. So what you notice, you said for m equal to zero, so there's no coupling. between psi l and psi r. Okay, so so the uh, it's the mass term which couple them together. Okay, kinetic term psi l just uh, there's no cross term between the psi, uh, psi l and psi r. Okay, and this behavior is actually general. You can write it in arbitrary representations, and but of course in arbitrary representation I can no longer use this sigma i. Okay, and uh, so uh, so this uh, uh, in this particular uh, form 
uh, 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 even though this feature is general, but, but this particular form of the eclectic term uh, uh, only applies for the chiral representation. So, so for m equal to zero, uh, you don't have uh, a coupling between the psi L and psi R, and then you only have psi L diagonal term and psi R term. And then that gives you something else. Okay, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so again, this is reduced to our previous statement that the, uh, if you have a massless case, you can describe using a two component spin. Okay, so here indeed. Uh, but, but here there's also something actual. So what do you see uh, uh, something actual here? Yeah, uh, did somebody raise your hand? Yes? Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, 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 good question. This, yeah, this expression is wrong, okay. Uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, somehow I was doing, uh, 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 I was trying to, yeah, uh, 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 I, I remembered I wrote this in the general basis, but then I realized I only wrote it in that basis. Yeah, in the general basis, I would have uh, psi equal to psi L plus psi L. Yeah, but then I realized I only write the kinetic term in this, uh, in this specific basis. Good. Yeah, yeah, so that expression uh, uh, does not apply for the chiral basis, but apply for the general. So here, actually, something profound happens because when m equal to zero, when you don't have coupling between psi L and psi R, you actually get the extra symmetry. Okay, so in the Dirac Lagrangian, so in the Dirac Lagrangian, Uh, as we discussed earlier, so we have a U1 symmetry. Psi goes to exponential i alpha of psi. Okay, so this Dirac Lagrangian is invariant under that because the psi is complex. But now, but now psi L and psi R, they are separate. So now I can actually transform psi L and psi R separately. Okay, so under this transformation, psi r and uh, psi l and psi r transform the same. Okay, but now m equal to zero, I can have psi l goes to the exponential i alpha l psi l psi r goes to the exponential i alpha r psi r. Because they only couple to themselves, okay, and now have this symmetry, okay, and uh, 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 so so now uh, uh, so here you have u one, now you have u one times u one, called the u one times l and the u one r. So these are called chiral symmetries because they transform the left and the right separately. Okay. Yes. Sorry. No, no, I can't write it. No, I can't write that way. Just now, I'm using the two component form. When I write two component form, then uh, then I write psi that way. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, be because of the. Psi L is the upper two component, Psi R is the lower two component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm using the same notation uh, for here, uh, uh, for this basis. And uh, uh, so in this basis, Psi L and Psi R, they only have two components. But in the general case, they are four components. Okay, so in the general case, I can write Psi equal to Psi L and Psi R. But in this basis, I cannot. Yeah, yeah using this notation, I cannot. So, um, so now you have a new symmetry called, uh, uh, which uh, uh, um, you can transform uh, uh, them separately. Okay. 
And the symmetries are one of the most important aspects of physics, and, and they have very uh, uh, important implications, etc. And the chiral symmetries uh, 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 actually has also very important effects in, uh, uh, in particle physics. For example, the, uh, the pions, okay? The pions has to do with, uh, 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 I will not go into detail, and the pions, uh, uh, they essentially come from uh, 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 the chiral symmetries. Okay, without the chiral symmetries, there's no pion. There's no pion. And, uh, and I, I actually understanding the, uh, uh, the, the, um, how the pions come from the chiral symmetries, et cetera, there was a Nobel Prize to Lambu, say, a number of years ago, uh, which our colleague Goldstone also made a very important contribution uh, uh, to that. And also, later, uh, 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 also interesting about this chiral symmetry is that they are there. Say, if you have a classical massless, say, if you have a massless, uh, 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 a massless Lagrangian, then you can have this symmetry in the classical level, in the Lagrangian level. But once you quantize this theory, you find the uh, symmetry go away. Okay, become a luminous, uh, called become a luminous. Uh, uh, symmetry is only present in the classical level, uh, but not uh, 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 in the quantum level. And, uh, and again, that played a very important role in particle physics, actually. Okay, yeah, uh, the bottom line is that the chiral symmetry uh, uh, is very important uh, uh, in many aspects of the uh, uh, physics, okay. It's also important in many condensed matter systems like liquid helium, et cetera. So you can also write this symmetry for general gamma. So for general gamma, you can have your previous symmetry. So, so now I'm using the four component rotation, which psi L and psi R transform the same way. And then you, now you have a new symmetry. Gamma five. Okay. And now, uh, now you can put the gamma five in the exponent. Good. Any questions on this? Yes? Yeah, yeah, if I tell that it's just some other constant. Yeah, if I tell that it's just some other constant, then you multiply gamma phi. So the way to understand that these two are related, so think about the transformation here. So here, we can rewrite a little bit differently. We can consider, rewrite this alpha L and alpha R in terms, uh, in terms of the following. Let's consider the two transformation. One transformation, psi L and psi R transform the same. And the other transformation is that they transform opposite. Okay, uh, they transform in the opposite phase. Okay, as I write the alpha, uh, uh, and, uh, 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 and this writing is like that. Okay, uh, so in this way, uh, psi L and psi R transform the same, but psi L and psi L and psi R, they transform uh, opposite because they have opposite eigenvalue on the uh, gamma phi. And so this is equivalent to that. Good, any questions on this? Yes? Um, I think again, it's a, a historical reason. Um, so, so people often like to go to Euclidean space. So when you go to Euclidean space, you continue gamma zero to gamma four. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, to gamma four. And then, and then you reserve gamma four for that. Yeah, then the gamma five is the next one you take. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, so massless case is always special. Uh, and, uh, and you will see uh, in physics, actually the massless uh, case actually give you very uh, much richer structure normally than the, uh, than the, uh, uh, than the massive particle. Uh, it's because, uh, mathematically it's because of the massless case, uh, 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 in the massless case, the representation on the Lorentz group is very different from the massive case. For example, if you have a vector field, say for a Maxwell field, for the photon, 
uh, massless photon have two polarizations. But if you have a massive vector, say if the photon is massive, then we have three polarizations. And so, and so the massless case the, uh, and the massive case are very, very different. So uh, the fermion case is the same. So, so, so if you have a massive uh, uh, fermion, you have four complex components. But if you have a massless case, then you have two complex components. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a very interesting question, and there are a lot of subtlety associated with that kind of question. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's, psi L and psi R certainly are independent. Uh, you can certainly treat them as independent dynamical. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, so, so, so let's conclude our discussion of the chiral spinders. And now we can talk about the Majorana spinders. Okay, so the, so the Dirac spinner, which we have talked about so far, is four components, so you have four times two real components, okay? And then the chiral spin that we talk about, essentially have two, com two complex components, it's uh, say two times two real components. Okay, two times two real components. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the Majorana. In which case, I will argue you have four times one real component. So it has four independent real component. Okay. Yes? So can you see R and L like the right hand and left hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so do you ever have a spinner where, like, what does it mean to have one of them non zero? So both of them are non zero, I guess. What does that mean? It's in my mind. No, 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 physically, uh, uh, electron contain both left and the right. Yeah, uh, so for massive particle, because they always couple together. So the left hand, so psi L uh, turning into psi R, psi R turning into psi L all the time. And you cannot, uh, for massive particle, you cannot really separate them. But now for massless particle, then, then psi L and psi R, are uh, uh, yeah, this is a very good question, psi L and psi R are preserved. So, so massive particle is either psi L or psi R. And then, and then if you look at their uh, so-called helicity, it's either left-handed or right-handed. So that's uh, where the name psi L and psi R come from. Yeah. But, uh, but for the massive particle, you cannot make this separation. Yeah. But for the massive case, then it's preserved. And then it's generally left-handed or right-handed. Okay, good. And now let's talk about the last case. This case, which is the, uh, you have four real components, okay? So, so what do you do? Again, we, uh, we follow the similar strategy to see whether it's possible to have four real components. Again, we first, uh, 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 the idea is that you first try to find the special representation of gamma matrices so that you can, a spinner can be real. Okay, and then you try to generalize to, uh, to any representation of gamma matrices. Okay. So, um, so now, now if you look at the Dirac equation, Now look at the rock equation. Say so if we if I want to find the real spinner, 
then I ask myself whether a real spinner is compatible with this equation. Okay? So naively a real scalar is not compatible with this equation because I take a complex conjugate and then take a gamma mu star. If psi is real, then psi has also have to satisfy this equation. Okay? But in general, gamma mu is complex, as we wrote before. Yeah, I just erase it. For example, in this basis, it's complex. Okay, if it's complex, then, uh, then these two equations are not compatible, and then psi cannot be real. Okay, as simple as that. It, it, it's, uh, uh, but there's only, uh, but there's a way out. The way out is that if there exists a reputation of gamma mu, the question is whether they exist There exists a, re a representation of a, ga a gamma mu, so that gamma mu is real. So if this is real, uh, and then these two equations become the same, okay, and then these two equations become the same, and then and then uh, and then for psi being real is compatible with the Dirac equation. Okay, uh, it's compatible with the Dirac equation. Okay, so so now let's so then now the, uh, uh, this become a question of trial and error. Okay, so you try to find the representation of gamma matrices so that it's real. Okay, and then uh, 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 it, it turns out you can find it. Okay, and here is the answer. So let me just write down the answer. I don't know how. He originally found it, Majorana originally found it, but here is the answer. So this is four gamma matrices, and you can see uh, 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 each of them is real because sigma two is pure imaginary, and sigma one and sigma three are real, and so this is purely real, and you can check this satisfied uh, the algebra of the gamma matrices. Okay, they satisfy the algebra of gamma matrices. They anti-commute with each other, uh, and each of them uh, uh, a square, uh, so each of them square into one, uh, so this three square them into one, this square into minus one. Okay. So, so now this is compatible with the Dirac equation, but this is actually not enough. We also have to be sure this is compatible with Lorentz transformation. Okay. So, so now let's check whether this is compatible with Lorentz transformation. So, so, so now we have uh, 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 this sigma mu, uh, gamma mu, and then remember the sigma mu mu, or uh, uh, I just raised it. So now this is pure imaginary, because if gamma mu and gamma nu are real, their commutator is also real, and then sigma mu mu will be pure imaginary. And then that means S lambda So this is now is purely real. Now this means this is real. And now we are done. Okay, that means that if we take the psi is real, then after Lorentz transformation, this remains to be real. Okay, and so that, that means that the, uh, uh, it's compatible with Lorentz transformation. So if it were not compatible with Lorentz transformation, then, uh, 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 then we were finished, okay? So, so, so this shows that this remains real. Okay. So, so such a, a spinner is called a Majorana spinner, okay? So it has four real components. Yeah, uh, we wrote there, it's four real components, okay? 
And uh, um, so you can quantize it, uh, uh, which I think I will give it as an exercise for you to do. Okay, you can quantize it. And then, uh, then in this case, then the, uh, uh, the, uh, the fermions are its own antiparticle. Okay, uh, its own antiparticle. Rather than, uh, uh, rather than for the Dirac spinner, uh, you have particle and antiparticle. So, so this is an analog of the real scalar uh, 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 in the spinner case. Okay. So, so this was discovered by uh, by Barona in 1937. Okay, and he was very young at the time. He was 31, and uh, uh, yeah, a brilliant physicist. Uh, completely genius, and then in 1938, so he li he lived in Sicily. Okay, so his hometown was in Sicily. So he boarded a ship from uh, Naples to 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 yeah to Sicily, and then he just disappeared on the ship, never seen again. <laughs> okay, never seen again, and uh, at the age of 32. Okay, at the age of 32, he just disappeared. Um, yeah, it's a, a, a quite, um, yeah, uh, yeah, extremely brilliant physicist, yeah. And the, the, the all kind of stories about his disappearance, they may be killed by mafia or, or maybe suicide, etc. cetera, but, but just nobody knows. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we will talk about that. Yeah. So, um, so now we have chosen a very specific representation for uh, for gamma matrices, which uh, psi can be chosen to be real. Okay. But how about for the general, uh, 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 for the general uh, 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 representation? Okay. So, so now uh, now we talk about the general. Um, my Rona spinner. Yeah, oh, yeah. Also, let me just make a remark. My Rona spinner, of course, uh, also plays very important role in in modern day physics. And uh, uh, it's uh, um, say, for example, people suspect a neutrino could be uh, 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 my Rona spinner. Okay, so so. To check whether a neutrino is a Majorana spinner, it's a uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, very, yeah, it's a forefront experimental program uh, has been pursued by many years, and also um, also in condensed matter, in quantum information, and the Majorana spinner play a very important role, and so so in condensed matter you only have electron, so electron. And the, the Majorana spinner is like half electron, okay? Because the electron have uh, eight, eight components, right? Remember, and the Majorana only have four components. So, so Majorana is like a, a, like half electron. So precisely because it's heuristic like a half electron, it, 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 it has very stable topological properties, uh, which electron a single electron does not have. And uh, and whether you can engineer in your in your condensed matter systems Majorana spinner. Then become a holy grail because if you can do it, and then you can do a lot of uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 you can uh, achieve more uh, more stable quantum computation, etc. Um, yeah, uh, during the last number of years, there have been various experimental reports. People say they have uh, uh, engineered the Majorana spinner in the lab, uh, which I think has never been um, fully confirmed. I think yeah, none of them has been fully confirmed. Anyway, so so yeah, so uh, so now let's talk about my Rana spinner in uh, in general basis. Gen uh, for general gamma mu. So the idea would be the similar to the case of the Carroll spinner. For the Carroll spinner. In the chiral basis, it's very simple, just upper, uh, upper and lower components. So uh, for the chiral spinner, you have to introduce some other structure to isolate psi L and psi R. Okay, so you have to, uh, uh, allow you have this non-trivial condition, okay? And the chiral fermion come from this non-trivial condition. 
come from this non-trivial condition. So, so now the key is that how to find the analogous condition to, to the psi to be real in the, in the general basis, okay? Be, because when gamma mu is, gen, uh, is ge generally complex, clearly you cannot set the psi equal to psi star, okay? That does not make sense. Uh, you have to uh, find the rather uh, equivalent equation to do essentially the same thing, okay? So that's the basic idea. Okay, so, so for this purpose, we want to, uh, uh, um, now we use that the any gamma matrices they're equivalent to each other uh, up to a similar transformation, okay? So, so, so let's denote this space is by gamma m, okay? And then, uh, uh, then we have gamma m, which is the, uh, uh, this called the Majorana basis. And then any choice of gamma mu then, then related to gamma m by a similar transformation, that, uh, that means there exists some matrix C, okay? That the C can take any gamma mu into gamma mu m, okay? So, uh, so, so there must exist C, uh, this equation is satisfied. Good. So, so now, given this C, then we can easily write down the condition for the general basis. Because under such a change of basis, Under such a change of basis, the Majorana, uh, the spinner in the Majorana basis, which is real, is related to the spinner in the in the gamma mu basis by this uh, transformation C. Okay. So the C relates to the gamma matrices, but the C of course also relates to the spinner. It's just a change of basis. Okay. And so so psi m will be related to psi uh, by C. And now since the psi m is equal to psi m star. So that means that C star psi star should be equal to C psi. Okay, so that means that psi star should be equal to B psi with B equal to C minus one star C, okay. So that should be the condition which you impose in the general basis. Okay. Okay, so that should be the condition you should impose in the general basis. So, so you have to introduce this C. So if you find the transformation between the, uh, between the, uh, uh, the general gamma mu and the gamma mu m, and then you can use that to find the B. And once you find the B, and then you can find the, the uh, you can impose the Majorana. Uh, yeah, so this is called the Majorana condition in the general basis. Okay. So let's understand a little bit. So actually we can understand B more directly. Okay, so here we express them C, but we actually can find B more directly. We can just take the, we can take the complex conjugate of this equation. Okay, because the gamma, uh, 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 because gamma mu m is real, so we can also take a complex conjugate of this equation. So that means that the, the since gamma mu m equal to gamma mu m star, so if we take a complex conjugate of that equation, it means that the c star gamma mu c minus one star is equal to c gamma mu c minus one. And now again, you just, sorry, the star, okay? So now if we put all the C to this side, and then we find gamma mu star, gamma mu star is just equal to B gamma mu B minus one, okay? So, so you just put this to this side, then you just, so this become B, 
and then this becomes b minus one. Okay. So so that now we see that b is actually makes sense. It, it, it's actually the matrix we take gamma mu to gamma mu star. Okay. So the b is the matrix uh, 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 to take star. Okay. Good. Any questions on this? Yes. Huh? Well, they just general long singular uh, 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 matrices. Yeah. Yeah, just four by four uh, uh, long singular uh, matrices. Yeah. Uh, they often can be chosen to be unitary, and but uh, but in principle you don't have to choose them to be unitary. Okay, so so now let's double check. So let's call this equation star star. So let's check that star star. So we showed that here in this representation, this is compatible with Lorentz transformation. Okay, so we still need to check star star is compatible. With the Lorentz transformation, okay. So what we mean by by this is uh, a compatible with Lorentz transformation. We mean that if we take a psi, which satisfies this condition, okay. So take a psi which satisfies that condition. Take a psi which satisfies star star. And then we make a, a, a Lorentz transformation psi prime equal to s lambda psi, okay? And then psi prime should also satisfy that condition. Star star. Okay, so that means this is compatible with Lorentz transformation. It means that the psi prime star should be equal to the same as b psi prime, okay? It means that uh, psi, uh, uh, star should satisfy, uh, psi prime star should satisfy that equation. Okay, so now let's check that. Okay, uh, now let's check that. So, so from here, so before checking that, do you have any questions on this? Okay. Good. So, so first from this equation, let's call this star star star. From this star cube equation, so we can find the um, so we can find the the b when you act on sigma mu e minus one. So that gives you minus sigma mu mu star. Okay, so this is obvious because sigma mu mu is uh, has the i there, so uh, so so the minus sign comes from the i, and otherwise the uh, the b take each gamma mu uh, gamma matrix there into star. Okay, and then that means that the s star lambda, which is given by exponential one half omega mu mu sigma star. Mu mu, sigma mu mu star. Now this is equal to, okay, just equal to um, um, yeah. You can just uh, uh plug this in, okay. Uh, uh, plug this in. It just become exponential minus i omega mu mu. Um, minus i omega mu mu. B sigma 
v minus one. Okay. So, so, so let me just yeah, the sigma mu mu v minus one. Okay. So I just inserted the sigma mu mu star is equal to minus that here. Okay. So so. So now you can, since this b, b, b minus 1 is in the exponential, you can immediately take it down. So that's just equal to b s lambda b minus 1. OK? So, so because when you expand this in power series, b and b minus 1 always cancel, except the first one and the last one. Okay? Uh, so we have used this trick many times. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and then. So, so we get a very, very nice relation that under Lorentz transformation, so the Lorentz transformation matrix under a compact conjugation, again, is generated by this B, okay, rated by this B matrix. And now it's just immediate, okay, so now just immediate. And now just immediate. So, so when you have the psi prime equal to that, let's just take the uh, star of this equation. Okay, so so psi prime star just equal to s star lambda psi star. Okay, so that is equal to b s lambda b minus one and b s a uh, b psi. Okay, so this is equal to B S lambda psi. Okay, so this is equal to B psi prime. Okay, precisely what we were trying to show. Okay. Good, any questions on this? Okay, so, so now let me give you a specific example of this matrix uh, 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 B in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, 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 so, so for this, uh, my runner representation, the B just equal to identity, okay? The B just equal to identity in, uh, uh, in this representation. And now let's try to give you an example of the B in the other representation. So, so suppose in the Carroll representation, which I wrote down before, okay? So, um, yeah, I should not have erased it. Um, yeah, anyway. So, so in the Carroll representation I wrote down before, so if you uh, stare at that expression, you find that gamma zero, gamma one, and gamma two, or gamma zero, gamma one, gamma three are imaginary, pure imaginary. And the gamma two is real. Okay, gamma two is real. Okay. So this pure imaginary means when you take the star of them, you get a minus sign. So this one, you take a star of them, you uh, 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 just get back to itself. So now if we look at this equation, so now if we look at this equation, so if we, if this is pure imaginary, you get the star, you get the minus itself, and then essentially you get the minus itself means that B actually anti-commutes with gamma mu. Okay, because you can just bring a B minus one to this side, so, so it just become gamma mu star B equal to B gamma mu. So, uh, so if this is minus gamma mu, that means B should anti-commute with gamma mu, okay? But if gamma is real, that means B will commute with mu. Okay, if mu is real, then that means B should commute with mu. So now in this chiral basis, these three are pure imaginary. That means B leads to anti-commute with them. But this is real, means B leads to commute with this guy. Then what is B? Hmm? Exactly. So B, in this case, can only B gamma two, okay? And then you, uh, we can work out what is the Majorana condition in this basis. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so essentially this condition. 
So that means that the psi star should be equal to gamma q psi. Okay. So that's the Majorana condition here. So now remember the in the chiral basis we can write psi in terms of the psi l and psi r. So essentially we have this condition. So I erased my gamma two. Okay, so so the gamma two. Uh, 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 let me write it here explicitly. Is minus i gamma two. Zero minus i sigma two. Sigma two. Yeah. Okay. So now, if you look at this condition, this means that no longer psi l and psi r are no longer independent of each other. So psi l star should be equal to minus i sigma two psi r, or equivalently psi r equal to i sigma two psi l. Okay. Or l star. Okay. So so uh, uh, so in this case, the psi then have the following form. Psi L, I sigma two, psi L. Okay, so sigma R it just can be expressed in terms of sigma L. So, so this is the Majorana spinner in the chiral basis. Okay, you see there are only four independent real components because each psi L is two complex components. Okay. Yes. Hmm? No, 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 no. Here we are imposing this condition, right? We are imposing this condition. Yeah, yeah. This is my runner condition we want to impose in this basis. So this is now independent of the masses and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. Good. So this concludes our discussion of the Majorana spinner. Do you have any questions on this? Yes. Sorry? The orthogonal component of uh, this Majorana spinner. Like, for example, like in the chart, in the chiral one, like psi L, and then you have the orthogonal component of psi R. I guess two components of psi. Yeah. So we are like, we have one component of psi, and there's still another one, right? So is that one? Uh, sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Uh, uh, say it again. Uh, 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 what? Okay, okay. Other questions? Yes? Right. So, so for the um, for the uh, uh, yeah, if we for uh, uh, for massless particle, you can just direct it because then you don't just have uh, you don't have to think about the psi r uh, and uh, 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 this is just have the same number degrees freedom as a massless particle. Other questions? Good. Okay. Okay, good. So, so, so let's now go to the next topic. We only have a few minutes, so so we can only just make some general comments. So so far, mostly we have been talking about continuous symmetries, but there are also discrete symmetries. Okay. So by definition, discrete symmetries are symmetries which don't have continuous parameters. Okay. So um, so continuous symmetry are symmetries which uh, um, um, yeah, which has the transformation depends on some continuous parameter. Okay, discrete symmetries you just don't. Okay, uh, uh, you don't have continuous parameter. So, so simple example. Say, let's imagine we have so this scalar real scalar theory we considered before.
So this theory has a discrete symmetry because this is invariant under phi goes to minus phi. Okay. So because you see uh, all the terms are even, that is invariant under psi, uh, uh, phi goes to minus phi. And this transformation, there's no continuous parameter. Okay. So this is a discrete symmetry. And so this is, uh, uh, so if you do it twice, you go back to itself. So this is often called the D2 symmetry. Okay, so this is called the D2 symmetry. And there are also space-time discrete symmetries. Okay, so this is an internal discrete symmetry have nothing to do with space-time. Okay, there are also space-time discrete symmetries. So space-time discrete symmetries, including, say, if we, we consider Minkowski space-time, so you can have t goes to minus t, so you can have so-called time reversal. Which corresponding to your tx goes to minus tx. Okay, you just transform time. You can also have the parity, so-called parity. You take t, you then you revert all the spatial direction. Okay. So, so comment that you can ask why we actually reverse all the all three directions. How about if I just reverse one direction or uh, revert two directions, okay? That seems also to be a discrete symmetry. And indeed, so if you just uh, uh, change the directions in, say, in the x direction, uh, uh, that's also discrete symmetry. And if you only change the direction in both x and the y direction, that's also a discrete symmetry. But if you change if you do the reflection in two directions, that's equivalent to a 90 degree rotation. Oh, a 100, 180 degree rotation uh, 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 in that plane. Okay, and so that is part of the continuous symmetries. So it's not independent discrete symmetry. And now, when you change all three directions compared to change one direction, you differ only by changing two directions. So that means changing all three directions, I change one direction, they differ by 180 degree rotation. Okay, and so that means that when you change, uh, this is the only independent, okay, discrete symmetry. Okay, uh, from the spatial translation, uh, from the spatial reflection point of view. Okay. So, for complex scalar field, so if you consider complex scalar field, Okay, if you consider complex scalar field, then this is no longer a discrete symmetry. Because remember, we can rotate phi by a phase. When you rotate the phi by a phase, if you take that phase to be pi, say so expansion i pi, and then you take it to be minus phi. And so, so in that case, this is part of the continuous symmetry, so it's no longer independent discrete symmetry. But here, there's nevertheless a lot of discrete symmetry. Can you see what is the other independent discrete symmetry here? Yes? Good, you can take phi to phi star. Okay, you can exchange phi to phi star. Okay, it's like complex conjugation. And this is often called charge conjugation. Okay, this is often called charge conjugation. Because remember, uh, uh, heuristically, we can think of phi uh, 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 as create, yeah, it's just one of them create a particle and the other create an antiparticle, and they, they have opposite charge. Okay, so it's called the char charge conjugation. So this will give a symbol called T, script T, and this will give a symbol called P, script P, 
And this we give a, a symbol called scooped A C. So to, all together they call CPT symmetry. Okay. Uh, CPT. Yeah, yeah, let's stop here.